Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1984. Today we have two with two cards here. They are 8 megabyte versions. So what, what I would like to do with these cards is upgrading them to the 12 megabytes. So double the texture RAM from 2 megabytes to 4 per TMU. So that's from 4 total to 8 total. This is gonna help a little with some later games and need more texture RAM. It's gonna give us better performance and better image quality, so we don't have to sacrifice the texture quality. So I have some uh, donor RAM. Also have some uh, new RAM from China. So we're gonna try that out too on one of these cards. I don't have enough for that one. I have uh, one set of donor, and then I got a few of these. I think they were. I think a strip of 10 were 15 euros on eBay and I haven't tested them yet but uh, the one who recommended them to me had tried them and had no problem on his card but that wasn't a Voodoo 2 but uh, at least they were working. So I'm gonna put these on using hot air on a hot plate. If you want to do this by hand with uh, soldering iron you can uh, uh, check my de description, there will be a link to Dexter's lab. He upgraded some Voodoo 2s to 12 megs 2 using an so a soldering iron. So if that's how you want to do it, you can check that out. So, on this uh, Voodoo 2 here, we got uh, some decently uh, well soldered pads here. So it's a nice blob of solder on each of them, a nice little island here. You can hear it here. I want to check first because this looks fine. I think we can just put the chips on that. On this one, there are pretty much no islands, so we're gonna have to add some uh, solder to these. So we can, uh, when we flow the new ships in place, otherwise, I have nothing to, to bind to. So that will be the first job here to prepare this card. So I will be using a pretty big tip here to do this, and I will add a solder blob to it. That's gonna deposit the tin on the pads. So this card is ready for some new memory chips. So the next thing to do is to put the one card on a hot plate and get it up to about 100 C, 90 to 100. Uh, it helps. Find to put the new chips on. So we already soldered on some chips. So this is the back of the, or the front of the card where the case would front of the case would be. So this way here would be the. VDA port would be over here, this way. 
We're gonna start in the corner here. And I have the hot plates here. It's uh, one and two. See? Now when you're using a hot plate, you have to think about the fact that the solder melts if you use lead dead that I do. Like I think it's 187C. Say 190 for an even number. So it's 100C now the board. So if uh, you have ships on the backside here obviously. So when you solder new ones on, if you heat up the board too much, you could actually desolder the ones on the back. So that's worth having in mind. Probably not as much of a problem if you don't have a hot plate, but on the other hand, you have to heat up the board for longer with the hot air instead. So it takes longer to get the ships on. And my hot air is set to 50% airflow and 420 degrees. And the ships won't see that temperature because the temperature depends on the distance. So the further away you are, the colder it gets. So I'm running basically a ship length, I think we say, 35 millimeter. And temperature can vary between uh, uh, stations too. Uh, I'm pretty sure mine runs a little bit on the cold side compared to what it reports. And I measured. And all of the ships, if we look over here, all of the ships have a like a slope. And that slope is facing the same way on ordinary wood two cars. So they're facing back to the VGA connectors. So we're gonna use that as an indication for the rest of them. So I'm adding some Amtec flux here to the pads. So I'm gonna place the first ship and uh, someone who's more skilled than me can probably do this while holding the hot air station and just drop them into place. But I haven't mastered that skill so I'm just gonna put them as center as I can and then they're gonna flow in place the rest usually. Now the ship is getting soldered. And now we're gonna do the last TMU here. So the last four ships. Now we can try this card out. Now some more Amtec flux here, and the solder is leaded, so it helps with the melting point. So the last ship here then on this card, and it should be finished.
So I'm gonna turn the board heater off and let's check the last two ships. They were about 170C. The board heater was uh, getting a little bit hot here at the when I measured before I started this area, so I lowered it a bit. That probably explains the extra tendency or so. Uh, other than that, I think everything went fine. I used the flashlight. My illumination is actually not as good as I would wish it was, but uh, it's used to check and the saw the joints much easier. You should see the solder flowing from the pad up to the pins and the ship should settle down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to film the next card from the side so we get some angle on that so we can see it flowing into place. But yeah, this card needs to cool and uh, well, just this. Whenever you're doing rework on your hardware, as with the, at least with the anti flux, the no clean one, it's not conductive. That's why it's called no clean because you don't have to clean it off. But that's it's because it's not conductive, so you won't get any issues. But uh, because it's not conductive either, it has a very high tendency to isolate on pins, and you might not even see it. You might have a smudge on your finger and get it on your PCI connector, for example, and the card doesn't work. So clean it off properly with uh, either electronic cleaner and a spray or some alcohol like properly because otherwise you're gonna scratch your head while the thing isn't working and you're gonna try to find faults in the cord you might not have because the only thing wrong is a dirty connector from the no clean flux and yeah I, I prefer no clean flux because then I can test the card without cleaning it every time in twins I can keep the flux here so if I need to remove a ship and put another one in I don't have to drench it in new uh, flux again, so I can test it as it is now once it's cooled. So here we have the first card in the system. So you can check that we have the right amount of memory. So it says we have 4 MB of frame buffer, which they should all have, and we have 8 MB of texture memory. So that's correct, and we can go in here, we can try some Quake 2. So let's switch over to the VGA capture. Here we are in Windows then, and we can check the card here. Voodoo 2, 10, 1000. System info, and we have 4 megabyte of frame buffer, and we've got a total of 8 megabyte texture RAM. So let's close that, and we can start a game. Uh, games. Quake 1, GL Quake here. Should get a nice 3DFX logo on this. We do. So, Quake 1 ran fine. Let's start up some Quake 2 here. It seems to be running fine too. We can check the video settings here. 3 fix up in GL 800 by 600. And yeah, we're artifact free here. And the reason why I mention it, it is if you have some badly soldered pins on your RAM, you're gonna usually get black dots on your textures in a systematic pattern. So then you have to recheck your soldering. And let's check Quake 3 here. Setup system uh, Voodoo driver, yeah. This will do. Single player. Fight. And here we are in Quake 3 Arena. And we're not artifact or anything. It looks as it should. Quake 3 is a bit tweaked, so we can't see my gun, but that's fine. That's just uh, me turning that off. Oh well. 
plane to capture sucks. So we have one good working Voodoo 2, 12 megabyte. So let's move on to the next one. This will be our second card. And I will use these uh, new old stock ships from eBay. They're not the same brand, but I have done Voodoo 2s before and Voodoo 1, and it doesn't seem to matter. As long as they're the correct type of RAM. So 100 MHz EDU, uh, 512 kilobytes each, so half a meg. Hopefully you can see, I can't zoom in anymore without losing focus, so this is the best I can do. So I like to push down on it to make sure all the, all the pads and pins connect, find that to be more reliable. So I will clean this card up and we can test it. We have the second card hooked up here. So let's switch over to capture. So this is the second card here with the new RAM from eBay uh, system info and we have eight megabytes. So let's start from Quake 2 here. And it seems to be running just fine here. Uh, let's try some 3 in the Mark 2000.
So we can see we have eight megs of RAM, texture RAM, and four megabyte of frame buffer. Okay, change. Gonna run through this benchmark and we see the score. Benchmark. Usually, if there's some a problem, we should see artifacting already. But uh, yeah, it looks good. So I'm gonna fast forward to the end, uh, unless you want to sit through five minutes of 3D Mark 2000. We're running the last test here, 7 out of 7. And we've got 2,234 points, which is in line with what we should get with the 12 megabyte with the 2 in 3D Mark 2000. So that's a second with the 2 upgraded from 8 to 12 megabytes. Here we have them. The Voodoo 2 cards we have upgraded from 8 to 12 megabytes. So this one got uh, basically matching silicon image RAM, the silicon magic are they called. And uh, this one also has silicon magic, but uh, we put on some Elite MT from eBay. So these are new old stock and these were uh, uh, donor ships. But both cards are working fine. so. Very happy with that. So, thank you for watching and have a nice day. We are going to host a public retro land party in Sweden on the 4th of February 2022. So, if you'd like to join us, you can go to braindrainland.tk and join our Discord or check out our Facebook page for updates on tickets. You can also check uh, the link in the description to Victor Bart. He made a very nice YouTube video last time he visited us. If you want to follow us, you can go to our social media webpage braindrainland.tk and pick your favorite platform. Link is in the description. You can join us on our Discord server. We host public lands when possible and game nights on our server hosting many old classical multiplayer games like Quake, Counter Strike and much more. Or you can show off your own retro LAN or maybe visit our members' private LAN parties. We have a galleries, benchmark channels where you can post images, videos of your retro hardware and your scores and much more. So come and join us and share your retro experience with us. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.